guys it's King Gabriel again here with another impromptu video and this video is on pain and bereavement pain as the Buddhists say is a mandatory but suffering is optional now what that means is pain the experience of pain once you're in a body or once you record identify with having a body is mandatory it happens sometimes something might accidentally drop on your toe or whatever and the fact is that's pain but the suffering associated with it where we prolong it in our minds and share that story and tell people of all the bad things that happen and continue to do it that is what is optional because you have the option to either continue with it and continue to walk with it for the rest of your journey or drop it right where it happened and when that physical pain or whatever it is that you're experiencing is over it's done with now in terms of bereavement the next part of that because it's pain and bereavement the bereavement process or grieving process uh, is the one in which we look at whoever the individual is that has passed away or made their transition to the other world as we look at it right now when they've made that transition they are not in a state of suffering anymore release from the body is actually quite liberating right instead of contracting it's liberating so what really happens is the people that are left behind that have to make sense of it in their minds are the ones who go through the greatest degree of suffering. Hence, if a person wants to have a grave site instead of a crematorium, uh, what do you call it, instead of the body being cremated of a loved one, it has to be understood because the suffering is no longer for that body. The suffering is for the individuals who are alive and witnessing what is going on with that individual, missing that individual, missing the scent, the connection, the ability to actually talk to that person in physical form. And they actually suffer a lot more than the individual who has actually made the transition. So it's really important that we understand with pain and bereavement that it is really, uh, in a sense, a presentation of what the mind contains right, at that instant. And in order to move forward in terms of derailing pain or excusing ourselves from constant pain, the idea is that we, number one, we either want to understand life in a way that puts us in a state that allows for things like that to happen without pain. For instance, if you are aware that you are in a body or that your experience is body-centered, you know that the body is not a permanent vehicle. It is temporary. It is meant for communication. It is meant for learning, mind's learning. And it's meant for interaction and expression of love, right? Now, if you know that that's the purpose of the body, then when that purpose is no longer needed, then the body also is no longer needed. So then a person making a transition from the body, from the time you come into this experience, you know that there will be a day when the body will be left or when your parents or your friends or and this makes us very sad usually but when we understand that it was a temporary stint they go on and they live and this is where sometimes reincarnation serves a purpose for us as individuals by understanding that life has not ended there but that the souls go on it puts us at greater ease some may say it's imaginary etc but if it puts you at greater ease and supports your mental health then it's worth it to think about it, at least think about it as a possibility. We do not limit ourselves based on our judgments and opinions of others in that way. We, If we leave it open, we leave space for us to adventure, open our minds and have an experience of not feeling contracted, stuck or pigeonholed into a certain belief that would leave us defending or feeling stuck, right? So I would say that's number one, being open enough to embrace the idea that life is not limited to what it seems part two of it i would say in terms of moving past any sort of pain that we experience or bereavement anything along those lines is really being able to connect to the fact that everything in life everything that we're experiencing has a purpose so even if people have done us wrong or we think it appears as if people have done us wrong it appears as if people are against us. All these things are appearances. Notice something, it appears, right? And if they're appearances, it's not real. It seems to be that way. But remember, life is an outward expression of your internal consciousness, right? The consciousness that's held within the being that you are. 
So it shows you what's there. Now people may come and shout at you and be mean to you and all these things, but that is the time to actually look at this. Number one, extend love, because that's how those situations are met with enough love to take care of them. Love straightens out all things, right? But at the same time, we experience that and we learn, and then we have a deeper understanding. We can see, okay, this is what caused that person to act that way. This is their understanding of life. They think that life is limited. By seeing those things and understanding those things, we give ourselves room to release it. And not release it like just say, oh, I just forgetting about that, while really in our hearts we're still angry and upset and we carry it on forever. No, I mean forgetting in the way that we're able to see and understand it fully. And in that understanding, we can then release it completely because we see where there's an inability to embrace that new idea fully and it's nothing it's not something to be judged either that's just the experience of that individual temporarily as they make progress right and we're all making progress so it's a deeper level of understanding that's asked for on that level and that's number two the third part i would say and this one i see as important is that we cannot forgive something and not forget it right and the only way to really forget what had happened or what was bad in this situation that's causing us pain is to look at it right and then in looking at it recognize that had it not happened that way then certain things that have lined up in our life or made themselves manifest in our lives would not have been that way either. In that way, we can watch it and be grateful for the situations that seem to be bad in the instant, but led us down a specific path that led us to where we are now, in this now, right? And in this now, if you know that that incident led you there, then even to those people that seem to have been, well, mean in your life etc or done things that seemed to be unforgivable in an instant you're now in a place where you can look back on it and say well i'm grateful that that's not that that happened but i'm grateful for where i am now and i know that that wouldn't have happened if that hadn't happened too so you know what i'm letting go of that incident i'm letting go of that person i'm grateful to that person in a sense for staring me slightly on a path that led me to where I am now. Thank you. And in that way, whatever the incident was, we can forget the incident and be grateful for that being because we know that on a, in a universal standpoint, or if we want to go greater cosmic, right, that this was aligned in that way by a conspiracy of events, right? And that was one event that had to take place to get you there. And so there's a greater level of understanding and another way to forgive there. And then we're open-hearted, we're able to move forward. So understand that pain, again, as I said in the beginning, is very much subjective, right? It always depends on what the individual is thinking about a situation that allows them to experience the amount of pain or suffering that they, exp they choose to experience, right? And in order to release it, it's always gonna be some sort of release of certain ideas that we have, forgiveness of specific concepts or of people, right? And it always leads us back to that space of being connected. Now, as I speak, I always speak about intention and the purpose and the electromagnetic forces as well. Uh, what it does when we actually go into getting into that state of forgiveness is the intention that was originally meant to be fulfilled which is being fulfilled right it must be being fulfilled these are the parts of it is allowed to flow very easily when we stop reaching out and reaching out for things that would keep us upset because the things that keep us upset actually pull us in a different direction it changes our intention temporarily right because we focus there but when we release of the things that were not supposed to focus on if we really want to fulfill that true intention then we let go our hands are free and we're able to create directly in alignment and that's really all it is that's all we're doing you know some could dispute and all of that stuff but truly if your hands are free your hands are free you're able to do more right so free yourself today give up pain and in the bereavement process be gentle with yourself as well 
realize that life may just be a little more than you thought it was. Right? Eternal love and infinite peace.